if you come back to me in a year and two years when uh, I'm halfway towards 200 stores at 100 stores, then I have to say we're you know um, greatly successful. Well, hello, uh, welcome to our program today, and it's a series of talks. And today we're very lucky to have Mr. B Wing, uh, who is an entrepreneur, but also a business person and executive of many companies, and he's been in Vietnam for over 16 years. So today we have the great pleasure of interviewing him, learning about his story, about his entrepreneurial path, and just wanted to say thank you very much for joining our show today. Just want to say hello a little bit to some of our audience. Thank you, Ken, and thank you for everybody out there who is viewing in to watch this show. I'm happy to share my stories with uh, everyone who wants to come to Vietnam and establish a business here. Uh, thank you. In case you're new to our program, uh, my name is Ken Yung, uh, International Business Transaction Attorney with over 12 years uh, of experience helping uh, companies abroad come into Vietnam, uh, exploring the market, opening up retail, uh, factories, and other businesses. So a lot of our customers and clients and also the YouTube base ask, how do you become a successful entrepreneur in Vietnam? What do you need to do? So today we have Mr. Fee, who will answer those questions for us as we go through this program. So are you ready to answer some of these hard-hitting questions about I'll you? Try it, I'll try About your life and how you became a successful entrepreneur. Uh, so first of all, um, how long have you been here and what was the catalyst to bring you back to Vietnam? I've been in Vietnam since 2006. I came back to Vietnam with a large uh, American corporation who established a new manufacturing uh, plant here in Vietnam. I was one of the very first expats to land in Vietnam to, uh, to start up our uh, business and hire uh, the first few uh, local employees to, uh, on our path to 4,000 employees over 10 years. So I've been here um, for 16 years and I left that corporation in 2010 and found some soft landing with other multinational corporations, but I always have an, a, a yearning to be an entrepreneur because I saw Vietnam as a, a location that was very vibrant. Uh, a lot of young people starting up their own businesses, taking ideas they've learned from um, North America, Europe, and applying those business model here. So just recently, um, probably because of COVID and changes in lifestyle, I decided to come, become a full-time entrepreneur Okay, great. Well, so I mean, want to jump right into it. Um, being in corporate for so long, working in multinational corporations, what brought you to become an entrepreneur in the last few years? I just see a lot of young people uh, start up new businesses, and I, I see some of their flaws in building a company. And um, they seek my advice out to help them uh, put in the business system, we're recruiting, structuring, management team. So I was their unofficial advisor. I'm official on a couple of boards of uh, startups. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, I always, people always ask me, and they ask me, this, Fee, how come you don't start your own business? And I always say, it's just not me. I'm, I'm a corporate guy. Um, but because of uh, the last two years, um, I decided I, I was going to make a lifestyle change and uh, take a chance on being an entrepreneur. Okay. What are some of those main lifestyle changes that you like thus far as an entrepreneur? I love uh, a unstructured day. Being in a corporation, I'm in the office at 7 a.m. I don't leave until uh, the work is done. And most of my days is just filled with uh, meetings after meetings after meetings. And these meetings are very repetitive and business is a cycle. So I, I do the same pattern every week, every month for the last 20 something years. So I, I wanted a break in the routine. I didn't want to have a fixed office location. I didn't want to have fixed hours. And I wanted to start something from, from scratch. Instead of joining a large corporation and hopping on a moving train and trying to make that train go faster, I'm learning how to do everything uh, from the beginning. 
of the business idea into a business plan, into a budget, into setting up the bank account, every little step in the way just to form the, uh, the foundation of a simple company. Okay. And so the, at the foundation of the business, uh, what kind of business entity are you using now and why did you choose that business entity for your um, entrepreneurship? The business entity you're, you're meaning is a limited liability company. Right. Um, to start out, it was just uh, my wife and I, so we, we just formed a, a, the simplest company, which is a limited liability company. Um, but I know that as I grow the business and want to scale, I have to bring in more investor. So we would probably convert it or form um, uh, the joint stock company as we sell shares to raise more funds uh, later on. So going straight into the business that uh, you are operating right now, and I know that you are a uh, franchise owner of uh, GS25 and area. Correct. And there are many other competitors in the market as well, uh, such as Circle K or Mini Stop, Family Mart, um, and 7-Eleven. So why did you choose uh, GS25 as a CVS model to buy into the franchise? Great question. So uh, I grew up on 7-Eleven in uh, Oregon. There was a lot of 7-Eleven stores. When I first came back to Vietnam, Circle K was the first in the market. So I'm a fan of convenience stores. When I go play tennis or golf, I always uh, grab something uh, before I go and grab something after I play golf or tennis to, uh, to quench my thirst or to feed my hunger. Um, I got the opportunity to work with GS25 when I was running Sunken Retail. Uh, GS25 was one of our portfolio brand that I helped manage. So I got to know the GS25 team very well, the local team and especially the, uh, the GS, GS Retail partners. Um, I believe they're one of the top notch um, conglomerate in not just Korea, but it also in Vietnam and Asia and around the world. So I'm a big fan of GS Retail. I saw how well they built the system, very disciplined, the way they select merchandise, the way they select sites. So um, that made me a fan of it and I just wanted to find opportunity uh, to be a partner um, in, in this business. So uh, I, I applied for the, uh, the franchise model and I was granted for two Duke cities. I'm very happy. Uh, they, they trust in me and uh, my investors to be able to represent the brand in two Duke cities. And I look forward to their help in building out 200 stores or more in two Duke cities soon. So with that said, uh, understanding the internal capabilities, also the parent company, so as and externally, what is your mission uh, for the uh, franchise model that uh, you've uh, agreed to? What, what is that GS25 mission of yours? Um, the mission is to really um, create the number one brand for convenience store in, in Vietnam. And a lot of ways to represent number one. Uh, first and foremost is the number of stores. So I would be one of the main driver to get uh, the store count up to 5,000, 10,000, how ambitious uh, some can retail and GS uh, retail wants to, uh, to have for Vietnam, I will be a key part in getting their store count as high as uh, we can to be number one or even breakaway uh, to be clear number one position in Vietnam. Okay, that's great uh, that as an entrepreneur, you can set those goals to be number one, but also to help within the system. But many of our audience wants to know uh, as a change to a multinational executive to becoming an entrepreneur, what are some of your responsibilities daily as now a business owner uh, of a region? I think the number one responsibility as an entrepreneur is that, um, of course, there's flexibilities in time and schedule and the scope of work, how much you want to do yourself uh, hands-on or you hire the team to do it. Uh, but the, the biggest responsibility as an entrepreneur now is that you own the business, you own the, the P&L, you own the financials. So when I work for a corporation during lean months, I never really have to worry about cash flow. I, I know that behind uh, the big corporation, there is a bank account that continues to, um, to provide the, uh, the funds. But as an entrepreneur, you have to be very, very cautious of your cash flows and make sure that um, your revenue is strong you control expenses because if you don't, it's your own personal money that you have to put into the business. And a lot of people don't like that. And before, uh, I'm not used to it because I've never been an entrepreneur, but now that I have to uh, put in my own asset and fund, 
I want to make sure that it goes uh, to build the business and not uh, waste uh, as part of expenses that we don't need. So you're looking very closely at the financials now, uh, the expenses, probably down to maybe uh, what water is being used or what supplies and what office you rent. Uh, and then, of course, absolutely, what absolutely, you, plan to hire. you have to. So, um, you know, there, there's a lot of unforeseen condition in, in a business. So, if you have to put in your money, I, I think your mindset, and not that I wasn't thinking like that when I was in the corporation, because I, I was also managed uh, the shareholders' um, uh, asset. Um, but now that it's your own fund and also your partners, you got to make sure that uh, you don't waste or unwisely spend any of the, the funds. You need to stretch it to make sure that it continues to grow the business up to a level where the business is proven, there's proof of concept, then we'll go out and raise the next round. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And I'm sure the multinational uh, budget, uh, marketing budget is much bigger than the entrepreneur's budget when you're talking about millions of dollars versus thousands of dollars. Uh, so for the advertising side or the marketing side, uh, does the uh, franchise uh, provide you marketing support? And if they do, do you also have to do your own marketing on the GS25 franchise? Uh, um, for, for most franchise models, um, the GS25 Vietnam will provide a lot of the marketing support. They will provide the uh, direct marketing, uh, they provide uh, indirect marketing, they will provide store marketing, points of sales marketing. So all of that is just part of their um, their cost to help the, the franchise uh, see like myself. Um, if we do have certain location where the store is not performing well, we may do our own um, specific store marketing uh, at that location. I haven't thought about it, or, but I need to talk with uh, GS25 if we ever get in that situation. I think we have the flexibility to do um, store marketing in location where we need to improve sales or visibility. Um, but overall, um, GS25 Vietnam, our corporate partner, is uh, responsible for um, the marketing. Okay, great. So you do have support from a, um, a bigger corporation that's a part of a bigger franchise for the marketing support. Therefore, you don't have to have such expertise in marketing to run your own uh, franchise successfully. That is correct. Um, GS25 corporate you know, will do the, the brand marketing. They would do specific uh, sales marketing, product marketing, whatever they need, because they need to do it system-wide. If I just do into Duke, um, it won't be as effective. So uh, we, we rely on GS25 partners to provide um, probably 99% of the, the marketing needs. Great, great. Only very uh, specialized marketing per store or Correct. per region. So Correct. that's great. Um, with that said, so there's uh, quite a few competitors in the market, as I mentioned before. You have uh, your Circle K, you have Mini Stop, uh, you also have Family Mart, 7-Eleven. So how, um, as per your mission, you want to be the number one as in the most stores. Mm -hmm. uh, how does GS25 stack up against this competition and how do you plan to beat them? 7-Eleven, uh, Circle K, Family Mart, they're all great brands. Um, They've all been in the market much longer than GS25. Um, when I looked at GS25, when I was managing the portfolio, I am confident in the, uh, the partner's leadership. They have very strong investment in the systems. Um, they are number one in uh, Korea with probably 14,000 stores already established. So the maturity of the system, the discipline of the management team, the talent that I saw uh, from their corporate team uh, gave me confidence that even though we're, we're years behind, that in a very short amount of time, we could build enough stores, good stores, proper stores, uh, that we will capture the number one position and continue to grow in Vietnam faster than the, the other brands. Okay, that's a great segue to understanding the decision of opening a franchise versus starting a brand new business. Uh, what are some of the main advantages that you saw in, uh, in buying into a franchise instead of start, starting your own business? It really comes down to uh, the goal of the, um, the founder, the owner, the, the investors. You can start your own business, but if you're open one retail shop, one restaurant, one factory, uh, it's easy um, for, you know, when you have a, a small scale. 
But if you're looking to build a big scale, then you really need probably need to think about franchising because it will take a lot of uh, money, a lot of years and talent to develop the the product, the business systems. And um, business system, you got to develop the, the merchandise system, the supply chain system, the IT system. People don't realize how much money goes into um, developing the foundation of a business to scale to 100, 200, 300, 400 stores. That takes a lot of years and millions of dollars to, uh, to accomplish. If you just want to do one restaurant, one coffee shop, one hair salon, uh, one auto shop, that's easy. You don't need a lot of system. There's already software off the shelf that you can plug and play. But to go to 100, 200 to 20,000 stores uh, in, a re in a country or a region, um, it's going to take millions millions of dollars and years and hundreds of people, back office talent, IT engineers, supply chain engineers, marketing professional to be able to build a large company quickly. So that's, uh, that's a great um, point to make because either you, for your philosophy, you go really big, uh, economies of scale, and then possibly make a lot of money, but then also cut out some of the headaches of building the systems that take a lot of time, money, and resources. So, and of course, as a new business that is not branded, it takes a long time to build that brand as well. And Creating a brand costs millions of dollars. People don't realize that. If you want your brand to be uh, top of mind, it takes millions, millions of dollars just to uh, buy the, uh, the advertising, the magazine uh, ads. So um, the best thing to do if you want to build a fast retail chain is to franchise. That's great. So location is critically important. And as your uh, area development franchisee, uh, I know that Ho Chi Minh City is taken up and then you chose Thu Duc, which is a new city uh, in uh, the south encompassing what was formerly District 2, District 9, and District Thu Duc. So can you let us know the reason why um, possibly you chose Thu Duc but not Binh Dương or Long An or Cang Thơ or Vũng Tàu or any other places? Why did you choose the, uh, the new city of Thu Duc? When um, the government announced that um they were going to form a new city called Tuduk to encompass District 2, 9, Tuduk, and some other uh, district uh, in there. Um, they also said they're going to make an infrastructure investment, put in more business park, and allocate more land for um, housing development. So Tuduk ends up being one of the uh, major growth um, new city uh, in the entire country. So we, we have you know the, the biggest Saigon High Tech Park, the you know the, the latest and greatest in uh, technology companies coming in like Intel, Samsungs, and etc. Coming into uh, Tuduk City, a lot of professional jobs, a lot of new um, high density development by uh, the Vin Group and Novaland, even some Kim Land itself. So it is an exciting, fast growth uh, city uh, of the future. So I wanted to be a part of that. Um, the other factor is that I live in District 2, so the, uh, um, the convenience of going to our convenience stores is uh, much easier, um, that I don't have to drive all the way across town to, to visit the, you know, the first stores to up to the 200 stores that we're going to open. That's great. So uh, proximity, convenience, and also the economic growth, and like you said, infrastructure is critically important. Yes. for its development. Yes. Uh, and as I know that you had uh, already built 17, um, there are 17 stores that are in Tuduk that, that you're working with right now. Uh, and due to the COVID situation for the last uh, two, almost three years now, uh, has your strategy changed? Uh, and what changes have you made in your business strategy to accommodate for the uh, pandemic? The, the, the reason to get in this business was really because of the pandemic. I, I saw the opportunity um, in the retail sector. So um, categories like uh, restaurants, bars, fashion outlets, uh, a lot of retail shops were, were struggling because uh, people couldn't go out. They needed to be shut down because of quarantine. The only retail business category that the government allowed to uh, continue to operate is grocery store and convenience stores because they are deemed essential. 
So as essential business, um, it actually helps when you're in a pandemic. Uh, the business also thrives when things return to normal, as uh, normal life resumes. Uh, people are going to work, they're taking their kids to school, they're, they're needing groceries, uh, you know, to, as a part of uh, their daily routine. So being an essential business was really something that the, the pandemic created. They created this new category called essential business. So essential doesn't mean that it only, it's only essential in the pandemic. Essential means that it's essential every day. It, it, it is a part of what drives uh, uh, the consumption, the needs of a, a neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. So perfect business to start in the pandemic, in the essential business. Uh, how would you describe the company's success thus far as a whole for Vietnam and uh, for yourself as a uh, entrepreneur? Um, I, I think GS25 is, uh, is successful and be greatly successful. Uh, our franchise business is uh, just starting out. So at this point, I think it's too early to, for me to say it's uh, successful because we're in our um, development execution phase. Um, if you come back to me in a year and two years when uh, I'm halfway towards 200 stores, at 100 stores, then I have to say we're you know, um, greatly successful. But at this point, there's still a lot of work um, to be done and there is uh, a lot of probably long days ahead, uh, rewarding and fun days of building the, the team that, that is going to help me build out um, 200 stores. Great. So one of the pressing questions that uh, entrepreneurs have is, when will I be profitable? If I'll be profitable. So for your journey, either uh, when was that mark that you hit profitability or when do you expect to hit that mark? We, we've done our uh, business plan, we've done our financials, and we believe with this particular uh, model and the unique um, relationship that we have with uh, GS25 that uh, we should be um, break even in, in the first year, if not uh, sooner. Um, remember, when you do the franchising, you don't have to worry about a lot of the infrastructure costs. That is borne by um, the franchise uh, ZER themselves. So all we need to do is find location, open stores, and sell. Uh, we don't have to worry about the, the big back office, the supply chain, the warehouse, the IT, ERP. Those are taken care of by GS25 corporate. So our business model is much leaner where we can realize uh, cash revenue every day in each store if we select the location very well. And we expect to be um, profitable in, in the first year. That is great. So on behalf of the audience uh, and here you and Global, we want to Thank you, Mr. Fee, very much for sharing your insight on your journey, also your success factors, and then your future plans. So for the audience, uh, you know, Mr. Fee has shared a lot about what he's done to be an entrepreneur, what he's done to do business, and also we have other videos about how to do business in Vietnam, uh, things you need to consider from a tax, from a legal, also from a business standpoint in order to open and be successful in Vietnam. We have a great example here in Mr. Fee, so thank you very much for sharing with us uh, your journey. And then we hope that uh, you'll be able on another series, uh, maybe a year from now, where we can ask you again what success level or if you feel like your company is successful. So we hope to bring you back another time. Thank you very much for uh, joining you, our show, and we'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye. So on behalf of Jung Global, thank you very much for watching our first part of our series on interviewing successful entrepreneurs in Vietnam. But as always, make sure that you like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, comment below if you want to hear from other entrepreneurs or other industries that may interest you, especially related to foreign direct investment into Vietnam. And of course, click on the bell for notifications to get a part of our new series, which is interviewing with entrepreneurs. So my name is Ken Yung. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one.